husband kicked me out and forced me to move in W slash my one month old affair instead of listening to me. Hey Reddit, it's been a while since I've been active on this app, but today I'm posting something personal because I really need a safe space to vent and seek advice. Please be kind. My life has taken an unexpected turn as my husband kicked me out of our home after discovering my one month affair. I know cheating was wrong, but I was honestly a bit bored. I was also feeling neglected and lonely. I'm not here to excuse my actions, but to share my side of the story. My name is Lisa, and my husband's name is Fred. I'm 25, but Fred is 26 years old. We've been married for two years, but our journey started long before that back in high school. We did everything together. When he went to college, we made sure that I would go to the same school. He even turned down a better scholarship to go to a school that I had a better chance of getting into, since he was one of the smart kids, and I was one of, well, the dumb ones. And when he finished, he immediately started working so that he could support us, which thankfully enabled me drop out because school and I have never gotten along. He works in cybersecurity right now. I'm not going to say the company's name for privacy. Sorry if I'm rambling, but I just wanted to get everything out of my system. Now let me give you a deeper look into our life before everything changed. As I mentioned earlier, my husband's job in cybersecurity is quite lucrative, and that allowed me to be a stay-at-home wife without financial worries. We didn't have any kids yet as we wanted to wait until we were in our 30s. Initially, it was a dream come true. I focused on maintaining our home, taking care of the cooking, cleaning, and all the typical household chores. Our relationship was solid, and we both put an effort to ensure everything ran smoothly. Being at home also gave me the freedom to indulge in my hobbies whenever I pleased. I could paint, read, or work on personal projects without any disturbances or worries. It was a luxury I appreciated and I had enough time to spend with my friends as well. Life seemed balanced, and well, I felt content. However, as time passed, the routine started to feel boring and mundane. My husband's demanding job kept him busy, and yes, I understood the importance of his work, but it also meant less time together. The spark that once ignited our relationship began to dim. Physically, I noticed changes in him, too. He wasn't as active as before, and he was skipping gym sessions and neglecting his fitness routine. His toned physique gradually faded, including those beautiful six-pack abs. Our intimacy also took a hit. The passion we once shared seemed to dwindle, and our sex life became less frequent and less passionate. It wasn't that we didn't love each other anymore, but the fire that was present in our early years had kind of dampened. As time passed, I got seriously bored with our routine. I figured getting a job might spice things up, so I talked to Fred about it. Surprisingly, he was cool with it and said I should do whatever I felt like. I started looking for jobs, but it quickly hit me that my resume was basically empty, thanks to dropping out. It was tough finding anything decent that paid well. I didn't want to settle for some low-wage gig, so I gave up on the job hunt. Instead, I threw myself into hitting the gym. I started going there like it was my second home, trying to get in shape so that I could feel good about myself. It was a real boost for me. Working out helped me clear my head and gave me something positive to focus on. As luck would have it, one day at the gym, I crossed paths with Kai. He was already in great shape, and although I didn't really need a personal trainer, I couldn't resist his charm. We clicked instantly, and I found myself drawn to his humor and outgoing personality. Our gym sessions were amazing, and they started becoming more than workouts. They were real moments of laughter and connection, things I didn't really have with Fred anymore. I started looking forward to going to the gym just to see Kai. I even rearranged my schedule to match his, eager for those moments of banter and just to see his handsome face. It was a huge refreshing change from the monotony I felt in my marriage with Fred. As I spent more time with Kai, I honestly couldn't deny the growing attraction and connection between us. It wasn't just about the gym anymore. We started hanging out outside of workout sessions. Kai was a breath of fresh air compared to my husband Fred, who always seemed preoccupied and busy with work and other commitments. Well, I soon saw myself resenting Fred more and more. He just seemed to have a vibrant life outside of our home, while I felt trapped in this routine that was slowly suffocating me. Kai, on the other hand, brought excitement and joy into my life. Our conversations were lively, and I felt like I could be myself around him without any judgment or expectations. Then my friendship with Kai deepened. I realized how much we had in common. We could talk for hours about various topics, from fitness and nutrition to life goals and dreams, it felt like we understood each other on a level that I hadn't experienced in a long time. Despite knowing that Kai was flirting with me, I enjoyed the attention and the feeling of being desired by someone other than my husband. It was a very huge contrast to my relationship with Fred, 
where I often always felt neglected and unappreciated. Kai's presence brought excitement and passion back into my life. I started inviting Kai to my house when Fred was away, because to be honest, I enjoyed the moments of companionship and connection that we seemed to have. I avoided introducing Kai to Fred or explaining how we met and became friends because deep down, I knew it wasn't just a friendship. Kai's intentions were clear that he wanted to be more than friends. And although he knew of my marital status, he didn't hesitate to express his desire to still be more than friends with me. As my resentment towards Fred grew, I noticed that he was trying to overcompensate for his absence and our lack of connection. He would bring home flowers, plan surprise dates, and even try to engage in conversations about our relationship. However, at that point, I was already too far gone to care about his efforts. The turning point came when Fred had to attend a two-day business conference out of town. The moment he left, I seized the opportunity to call Kai over under the excuse of watching a movie together. We hung out for a while, made jokes, ate popcorn, and laughed, but the tension and attraction between us was too great. And while the night progressed, things naturally escalated, and we ended up sleeping together, with Kai staying over in our matrimonial bed. Surprisingly, I didn't feel guilty or regretful immediately afterward. Instead, I felt a rush of excitement and satisfaction. Being desired and wanted by Kai, especially in a way that I hadn't felt with Fred in a long time, was mind-blowing. That was the start of my relationship with Kai. Well, soon Kai started coming over more frequently, especially when Fred was away, and I'm not even going to lie to you guys. I found myself eagerly waiting and hoping for those moments. Gone were the days of feeling sad or lonely. Now I was always excited whenever Fred was out of the picture. Of course, Fred wasn't blind or dumb to the changes in my behavior. He tried to talk to me about it, expressing concerns and trying to understand what was going on, but I brushed off his attempts at communication. I was too caught up in the thrill and rush of my relationship with Kai. In my mind, I had convinced myself that I had the best of both worlds. On one hand, I had a stable and secure marriage with Fred, who provided for me and took care of our household. On the other hand, I had Kai, who fulfilled my physical and emotional desires in ways Fred couldn't. It felt like having the perfect balance, a secret spice that added excitement to my otherwise mundane life. However, there were some downsides to my relationship with Kai that I chose to overlook. One of the major issues was his constant request for money. He would often promise to pay me back soon, but those promises never ever came to pass. I justified his behavior by chalking it up to his forgetfulness or temporary financial struggles. After all, I was still financially supported by Fred, so I didn't see it as a significant problem at the time. Of course, during our affair before Kai finally found out, there were definitely some close calls that made us realize the crazy risks we were taking. One incident stands out strongly in my memory, LOL. Fred had gone on a road trip with some buddies, Kai and I had just finished having sex, and we were relaxing at home when I suddenly heard the unmistakable sound of Fred's sports car pulling into the driveway. My heart legit skipped a beat, and panic well started to set in because I realized that Fred was unexpectedly home. He usually informed me beforehand if he planned to come home earlier than he said he would, but this time, there was no warning. Not a text, not a call, nothing. Fred's car was loud and distinctive. Sport cars were a passion of his, so it was easy to recognize. And in that moment, I knew we were in trouble. I hurriedly rushed Kai to get dressed and hid him in Fred's man cave, hoping that Fred wouldn't go there immediately upon arriving home. I had to wait hours until Fred went to bed before I could let Kai out of the house. Kai also started getting possessive, like a typical jealous guy. He always wanted me to take off my wedding ring whenever we were having sex, and I even ended up losing it, which is a shame because I could have pawned it off now. That immediately raised suspicion with Fred. He noticed right away because I never took that ring off. It was a big red flag for him and made him question what was going on. Kai also started telling me how to treat Fred. He pushed me to stop being affectionate with Fred or acting like a wife to him. I went along with it because deep down I was still mad at Fred for neglecting me. I kind of wanted him to feel some of the hurt I'd been feeling, so I treated him poorly, making things even worse between us. Kai's possessiveness and jealousy didn't stop at wanting me to remove my wedding ring. He would go as far as calling and texting me nonstop when he knew Fred was home. If I didn't respond or answer, he would get angry and bombard me with a barrage of calls and messages. Despite Fred trying hard to fix our marriage and suggesting we see a counselor, I wasn't keen on the idea. Kai had a way of making me doubt therapy saying therapists could mess with your head. So whenever Fred brought it up, I dodged the topic saying I was busy or not ready. 
It was like I was listening more to Kai than my own common sense or Fred's sincere attempts to help us. Mind you, at this point, Kai and I had only been dating for a few weeks at this point, or probably about a month. I noticed Fred was getting a bit stingy with money. He became more cautious with money, cutting back on splurging, and moved all our joint account money into his own account, which was quite a lot of money. When I confronted him about it, he explained that since I was a stay-at-home wife, the money in the joint account was essentially his, and he had only given me access for necessary expenses. He also mentioned wanting to invest in something new, which required a large sum of money, which sounded good at the time because I thought it would bring in more money for us. Plus, to be honest, I didn't see it as a major issue because he was still taking care of the bills and other expenses. Besides, I thought his investment plans would eventually benefit us financially. However, looking back, this should have been a red flag for me to pay closer attention. Of course, I was bummed that I couldn't give Kai as much cash as before. He whined about it, but I reassured him by saying that if Fred's investment hit big, we'd all be rolling in dough. I figured if Fred made a pile of money, I could divorce him, pocket a chunk, and Kai and I could start fresh, living our dream life. We chatted about this a lot, with Kai daydreaming about me ditching Fred for him. It became a regular topic for us. The second red flag that should have caught my attention was when Fred canceled my gym membership. It hit me hard, not just because I loved going to the gym, but also because Kai and I had built this sort of perfect image there. We were popular, and I enjoyed being in the spotlight. Many people at the gym thought Kai and I were dating because of how close we were, and some didn't even know I was married. The few who knew didn't see anything wrong because Kai and I never did anything inappropriate in public. We maintained the facade of being just friends, even though our flirting was pretty obvious. When Fred canceled my membership, I was angry and confronted him about it. I told him how much I missed going to the gym, especially when he knew how much I loved gymming, but he brushed it off with the excuse that we needed to cut down on expenses. He promised I could go back in a few months, but I could sense something was off. Kai was also disappointed, but I tried to downplay it and cheer him up, or course, because there was nothing else to do. The third and final red flag that I completely overlooked was when Fred mentioned he would be going on a week-long trip. That was yesterday, and the reason why I'm writing this rant now. Typically, his travels lasted four or five days at most, so the idea of him being away for a whole week was unusual. Looking back, it should have been a huge and glaring warning sign, but I was so wrapped up in my own plans that I didn't see it coming. I also kind of stupidly thought Kai and I were foolproof and there was no catching us now. Fred informed me about the trip a week before, and I didn't suspect a thing because like I just said, I was confident in my ability to cover my tracks. I believed I was invincible, untouchable, and that no one could catch me. I was so excited about it and I told Kai about it, and we made a plan that the moment I had dropped Fred off at the airport because obviously I wanted to play the role of a good, dutiful, and loving wife and accompany him to the airport, I would turn the car around, go pick Kai up, and take out to our house to spend the entire week with me until Fred got home. On the day of his departure, I played the role of the dutiful and loving wife, dropping Fred off at the airport with all the usual affectionate words, I love yous, I'll miss yous. Little did he know, I had a different agenda. As soon as he was out of sight, I turned the car around, picked up Kai, and took him to our house, ready for a week of uninterrupted sex and just pretending Kai was my husband instead of Fred and that we owned the house. We were excited and our plans were set in motion smoothly. We grabbed some food, headed home, and wasted no time getting down dirty on the very bed I shared with Fred. However, our bubble of excitement burst when, I'm sure you've already guessed it, Fred unexpectedly returned home and caught us in the act. There was no surprise on his face just a quiet realization of what had been going on behind his back. After Fred caught us in the middle of things, it was pure chaos. I was scrambling to cover up while Kai was trying to find his clothes and get out of there. Fred's reaction, though, was totally unexpected. He didn't yell or flip out like I thought he would. Instead, he was eerily calm, almost like he knew this was coming all along. So basically, that meant he pulled an Uno reverse on us, told me he was going on a business trip, and then turned back around. As Kai rushed out, Fred just looked at me with this blank expression, saying he'd been on to us the whole time. It was like he wanted to see it with his own eyes or something. He told Kai to get out, and in no time Kai left, and then surprisingly Fred left too, leaving me stunned and speechless. The silence that followed was deafening. I kept expecting Fred to come storming back in, shouting and demanding answers, but he didn't. He just left, and that was it. I was left alone with my thoughts, wondering what would happen next. 
Kai messaged me right after, freaking out about what went down. He even suggested we grab some valuables and make a run for it. But I knew that would only make things worse because I knew Fred would go to the police and that wasn't trouble I wanted. Deep down, I still had this tiny hope of fixing things with Fred, even though I was torn between him and Kai. I mean, I loved Fred and then I loved Kai. Is it possible to love two people? I tried reaching out to Fred, bombarding him with texts and calls, but there was no response. The whole night passed with no word from him or anyone else. I honestly thought he would have called our friends or families and told them, and then they would have started blowing up my phone, but nope, nothing happened. The next morning felt so tense, like a storm was literally brewing. Fred's return home was like a dark cloud descending over us. He didn't say much, but his silence spoke such volumes. I had a sinking feeling that something serious was about to unfold. When Fred finally spoke, it was like a punch to the gut. He asked if I had packed my stuff. I tried to play dumb, hoping I had misunderstood, but deep down I knew what was coming. He didn't mince words, and he said, and I quote for y'all, we're getting divorced, I can't forgive you and I won't. Pack up and go live with your boyfriend. It was like my world crashed down around me. That's when I decided to pull out all the stops. The waterworks started. Tears were literally streaming down my face as I begged and pleaded with Fred. I knew I had made a huge mistake, but the thought of losing everything, the beautiful house, the comfort, the security, it was too much to bear. I know I didn't deserve to be forgiven, but I also believe in second chances too. The house we shared was like a dream, a haven of luxury and comfort. It had everything, seven bedrooms, a man cave, a swimming pool, a game room, even a dedicated Netflix and chill space. It was a life I didn't want to give up, especially for the unknowns of Kai's world. I had never been to his place, didn't know where he lived or how he lived. The thought of settling for less than what I had grown accustomed to was terrifying, to be honest. I also didn't know what Kai really did his work or how much he earned, but I knew it was nowhere close to what Fred earned. Well, as I continued to cry, Fred's words started cutting through my tears. He threatened to call the police or get others to throw me out if I didn't leave voluntarily. That threat ignited a fire of anger within me, to be honest. Why was I shedding tears for someone who had neglected me so deeply? If he hadn't neglected me, I wouldn't have strayed. It was his neglect that drove me to this point, and I wasn't going to take all the blame. I didn't want to go back to my parents' house. They were judgmental, and I could already imagine the disappointment in their eyes if they knew what had happened. They would probably blame and nag me. I also had no siblings that I was close enough to turn to. Kai seemed like my only option. So despite the chaos and everything else, I started packing my belongings. Fred, in his petty rage, told me not to take the car he had bought me. It was a ridiculous demand, but I was too incensed to care. I agreed to his demand and continued packing. With no money of my own and Fred cutting off my access to funds, I couldn't afford a hotel either. So yes, I reached out to Kai for help. He responded swiftly, offering me a place to stay and promising to pick me up. It was a relief to know I had somewhere to go, even if it wasn't up to the standards of my luxurious home. I knew I had to make do until I figured out my next steps, whether it was reconciling with Fred or securing something huge from the divorce, like the house. Petty Fred, of course, refused to let me take the expensive jewelries he had gifted me, including the ring. I argued briefly, but ultimately relented, realizing it wasn't worth the fight. With my essentials packed, I made my way to the porch, waiting anxiously for Kai to arrive and pick me up. While Kai showed up and started loading my stuff into his car, I felt so relieved. He was really cool about everything, which was a nice change from the drama with Fred. Fred, on the other hand, didn't even bother coming outside to say goodbye. He probably watched from inside, but who knows. Now this is what I need a bit of advice on. Can I actually get the house and the divorce? I don't know how much exactly, but I know Fred makes a ton of money. I don't know much about how divorces work, but I'm hoping there's a way I can get what I deserve. Maybe there are legal tricks or ways to negotiate with Fred that I don't know about. If anyone's been through this and has advice, I'm all ears. This whole situation is overwhelming, but I'm trying to stay strong and figure it out as I go. Update. Hey Reddit, it's me again. I've read through all your comments, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Some of you were nice, but a lot of you were not so nice. Let's address some of the points raised and clear up a few things. First off, yes, I've been labeled as a narcissist and manipulative, and I get it. I messed up, and I'm not proud of it. The cheating with Kai was a mistake, a big one, and I take responsibility for it. But let's not overlook the context. Fred's neglect and the strain in our relationship played a significant role. 
It's not an excuse, just a part of the bigger picture. To those calling this a rage bait or a shit post or wishing it was, I'm right there with you. I wish this was a fictional story where I could magically fix everything and go back to my old life when Fred didn't know about Kai. Unfortunately, reality bites hard and I'm dealing with this whole shit show like in real time. Many of you suggested getting a lawyer and that's exactly what I plan to do. Money is tight right now, so I'm hoping Kai can lend a hand. I'll need a strong legal defense, especially because I know Fred will want to push hard in the divorce proceedings. Regarding alimony and the divorce, a lot of you said it's a mixed bag depending on state laws, and a lot of you rightfully guessed that I am in America. Some of you also rightly pointed out that evidence of infidelity could sway things heavily. Luckily, I don't think Fred has concrete proof of my cheating. No recordings or witnesses besides him walking in. I can deny it in court and explain my relationship with Kai started after Fred kicked me out. And lastly, I've noticed some comments mentioning that I come across as unfeeling about the whole situation. Let me clarify. I'm doing my best to express myself honestly, even if it comes off as ranting. It's not easy to convey emotions purely through text on a screen. So to those who find my tone off-putting, I apologize, but I'm just trying to be clear and direct about what's happening. It's frustrating when some comments seem overly critical, especially when my emotions are running high right now. This whole situation is a mess, and I'm trying to navigate it as best as I can. If you've got constructive advice or support, I appreciate it. If not, please refrain from adding fuel to the fire. Thanks for reading. Update. Hey Reddit, it's been a crazy roller coaster of emotions since I left Fred's house, but writing here feels like a therapeutic outlet. So I'll share what's been happening lately. Firstly, the negative comments and DMs aren't exactly enjoyable, but the platform here allows me to express myself freely, almost like a blog. So let's dive into the updates. It's been a week now, and strangely, I haven't received any calls from friends or family. It's a bit odd, but I'm taking it as a good sign. If Fred had spilled the beans, I'd expect my phone to be blowing up by now. So I'm assuming he's kept things quiet on that front. Me calling them asking would be suspicious, so I'm just going to enjoy the peace and quiet. As for Kai's place, well, let's just say it's not the dream apartment I dreamt of or like. It's pretty rough, to be honest. I care for Kai deeply, and I want to stay with him but the living conditions are challenging. However, a temporary compromise until things stabilize, Kai does have big dreams though. And if I do get the house and the divorce, we won't have to worry about rough living conditions. Fred and I haven't been communicating much, except for a message he sent about me getting served soon with divorce papers. It was expected though. I mean, given the circumstances. Living with Kyle has its downsides too. Turns out he has a roommate who happens to be his ex-girlfriend. It's awkward to say the least, but I understand their financial situation with the housing crisis and all. They wouldn't be able to afford rent without the other and finding roommates are quite hard. It's not ideal, but I'm making do with the situation for now. Update. Hey Reddit, it's been about a month since I last shared my story here. Honestly, I didn't expect the negative comments and remarks to decrease, but I hoped they would at least ease up a bit, especially since I voiced my concerns about them. However, it seems they've only worsened. My posts have gained traction across various social media platforms like TikTok and Reddit, and every time I check the comments, I'm bombarded with criticism. It's frustrating because it feels like nobody understands my side of the story. It's not my fault that my husband prioritized work over our relationship. Yes, I understand he was providing for me, but can't there be some empathy for my needs too? I'm human, with emotions and desires. The negativity became so overwhelming that I had to take a week-long break from social media just to clear my head. On top of dealing with all this online backlash, I've been trying to find a job. It's been a struggle because I've never had to work before. Kai and I had some disagreements about this because it's a huge adjustment for me. He assures me that it's temporary, but the reality of having to work now is scary. Despite these challenges, I followed the advice of many here and lawyered up. My lawyer informed me that we don't live in a no-fault state, which means the judge will consider my infidelity during the divorce proceedings. This news was heart-wrenching because it could mean I won't get much, if anything, from the divorce settlement. I've also been served, so it looks like I'll have to go to court soon. I'll keep updating because despite the negativity, sharing here feels therapeutic, and many of you have expressed interest in staying updated. Update. Hey Reddit, it's been quite a while since my last update. I'm here to vent and share what's been happening in my life lately. I'm currently at Kai's in my apartment, and I just need to unload all the crap that's been going on. Let's talk about these never-ending divorce proceedings. I got served by Fred, and let me tell you, it was a total mess. 
I'm pretty sure the judge and my lawyer were somehow swayed by Fred because despite the judge being a woman, she never seemed to be on my side. As many of you predicted, I was dead wrong about Fred not having any evidence. Turns out he had installed cameras all over our house, including our bedroom, weeks ago, especially after Kyle started coming over frequently. Fred presented a mountain of videos in court, proving that I had cheated. Now here's where I screwed up big time. I didn't know about the cameras, so I went into court and confidently denied cheating, only to be blindsided by Fred's evidence. Strike one for me. The judge wasn't pleased, to say the least, and my lawyer was furious because I didn't tell her about the cheating, but I didn't think it was relevant then. It isn't something I like to talk about. It felt like the judge had it out for me and my lazy lawyer barely helped. I always thought women were supposed to support each other, but clearly that wasn't the case here. In the end, I got practically nothing from the divorce, just a measly amount that barely covered my lawyer's fees. It's even a miracle we found a lawyer that agreed to take payment after, but Kai apparently knew her and was the one to introduce her to me. Kai couldn't lend me any money, so I had to use what I got to pay off the lawyer. It's like the money flew away as soon as I got it. I walked away from the divorce with nothing to show for it. I was gutted because I didn't even get the house, which was my main goal. I dug into some legal stuff. I found out that in civil cases, both sides are supposed to see the evidence beforehand. So I'm thinking, can I sue Fred for not showing me the evidence he had about me cheating? If I knew he had that, I wouldn't have lied in court. But when I asked my lawyer, she wasn't sure because Fred could claim it was a last minute addition. Then there's the judge. I felt like she was totally biased during the whole thing. Can I take legal action against her too? Can I push this further? Maybe argue that her verdict wasn't fair. And then there's stupid Kai. Right after the court drama, he changed. He started calling me a lost cause, saying that he should have never invested in me anyways. I do not understand sincerely, because I do not remember one time Kai ever gave me money. So when exactly did he invest in me? He said that he had hoped I would walk away from the divorce with something to show, but I didn't even get anything for all the efforts. We had some heated arguments about everything that went down because I felt like Kai wasn't being fair. I mean, I did my best in a tough situation. What more did he want from me? If he had supported me better financially, maybe I could have afforded a top-notch lawyer. In my mind, a big part of this mess was his fault too. Our arguments reached a boiling point and he stormed off. Now here I am back at the apartment waiting for him to come back while I rant on Reddit to pass the time. I'm sure my enemies will be laughing at me now. Update. Hey Reddit, it's been a while and I'm back to rant about some recent developments. First off, I was shocked and hurt to see some of the messages celebrating how the divorce proceedings went in Fred's favor. It's incredibly cruel and insensitive considering everything I've been through. Recently, I stumbled upon some shocking revelations that left me well shocked. Kai's ex wasn't his ex. She's his current girlfriend. They revealed it to me themselves because now they have nothing to benefit from me again. To be home, though I don't, who is more foolish in this whole mess, me, Kyle, or his girlfriend. They actually believed that I would walk away from the divorce with something substantial, and then Kyle could somehow benefit from it by taking it from me and then ditching me. It's ridiculous. And the worst part is realizing that all the money I gave to Kyle when I was still with Fred was likely spent on his girlfriend. I was furious when I found out, but I had to strategize my next moves carefully. If Kyle and his girlfriend decide to kick me out, I'll end up homeless. Kyle now sees me as a lost cause, someone not worth saving or investing in anymore. I had to plead with him to let me stay a bit longer to figure things out, and thankfully he agreed. However, the atmosphere in the apartment has changed. They're no longer pretending to be awkward around each other and are now all lovey-dovey, which is shocking and unsettling. I'm in a tight spot financially. I need money to move out and start fresh, but I'm not sure what steps to take. Should I reach out to my family for help? Should I swallow my pride and ask Fred for financial assistance, perhaps for old time's sake, or maybe if he'll take me back? I'm even considering starting a GoFundMe because I'm desperate for any kind of support or help at this point. It's a really tough situation, and I'm feeling lost and overwhelmed. Update. Hey Reddit, this might be my last update. It sucks seeing my posts blow up when everything's going wrong for me. After the divorce drama, Fred blocked me, then unblocked just to mock me with a link to my post before blocking me again. Ouch. I thought sharing my money struggles would get me some help, but nope, Nada. I'm hitting rock bottom here. Not one of you even reached out to offer help. Kai and his girl kicked me out, despite me begging Fred for help, even showing up at his job. No luck. He just said it's karma and told me to deal. 
I tried my parents because like I said, I'm not close to my siblings and I'm sure they'll 100% be on Fred's side. Even my parents have told me they're on Fred's side. They'll let me crash for a bit till I get back on my feet. It hurts that even my own folks are siding with him, but they won't ditch me completely. As for saying I would sue the judge and Fred, I guess I was just ranting because I was angry and just so devastated. I know the judge was fair, the lawyer did her job with the evidence I provided, and I won't sue Fred because I do kind of deserve a bit of what happened. It's tough realizing nobody's got my back, not even friends or family. With no support, I'm honestly lost on what to do next. This might be my last update as I figure out this mess on my own. Goodbye, y'all were horrible. I won't miss you all, though I will miss the ranting.